guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale and today finally you guys have been asking for these guys to come on the channel for a while now and I have both of them here. Two birds, one stone. I got Dank Ganon and that one guy. Fellas, what's up? How you doing? Uh, how you doing Dank Ganon? I'm doing great Ash. How about you? I'm doing fantastic and uh, and Cam, that one guy, how, how you been man? Been a while. Uh, I've been doing great. I, I want to yeah, ask how you're doing but uh, just <laughs> answered. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there for sure. I don't know about my packet deck right now. I'm kind of having thoughts about whether I need to make some changes to it, but I guess that's another video for another day. Today, we're obviously talking about Expo. I mean, what else would we be talking about with you two on the channel? We're going to be alternating between completing a grand challenge and playing at the top of ladder with uh, Dan Gannon, obviously, and with that one guy, as you can see, their player profiles here. But let me start out by asking you guys... Uh, We'll start with you, uh, again, and just playing the classic 2.9. You know, why is this still your preferred Expo deck, and what do you think about the Expo buff? It was kind of a polarizing buff. A lot of people saying that it was unnecessary. Kind of, I mean, you're a little biased, probably, both of you guys, but, but where do you <laughs> fall on that, and, and why is it still your go-to, the 2.9, instead of all the other kind of versions? We're going to talk about this one as well. Well, mainly I prefer 2.9 because i've been playing it like for so long and it's like it's probably like one of the best expo decks out there mm -hmm. and i mean sometimes i do play other variants but that's usually just when i'm tilted but i <laughs> i mainly play 2.9 just because of like the cycle because you have ice spirit uh skeletons tesla archers they just they all synergize together. yeah absolutely do you think that 2.9 is in your opinion kind of uh, maybe someone who's not normally an expo player do you think it's the easiest to pick up and have success with or do you think it's a little bit more on the the higher skill cap or, or it takes more practice than other expo decks uh it definitely takes a lot more skill to actually like play it it's, it's mainly the cycle cards mm -hmm. that that requires like a lot of skill and it's just like knowing what you're doing especially because it's it's mainly a defensive oriented deck so yeah, and we'll talk about all the uh, the tips to kind of give you guys some pointers on picking up this deck as we go into the video. And uh, before we do that, let's transition to Cam's deck. That one guy, tell us about your version, man. It's 3.4, so it's a little bit more expensive. You don't have the Tesla. You do have one of the cycle cards. You have guards, and you also have E-Wiz. So why do you like this version? Uh, so this deck, uh, for one, it's something new. Uh, one of the reasons I'm really liking Inferno Tower right now is because with Snowball kind of taking over the meta, they don't always have a reset, which can make Inferno Tower really good against all these uh, just big tank decks. Uh, onto that, it being something people aren't really expecting, sometimes you can catch them off guard with an Inferno Tower after they go with like an opposite lane golem. They'll go, they'll go, they'll commit hard, and you can honestly take an entire tower and defend a lot easier than you could with 2.9 because you have the Inferno Tower. Uh, it's just really something new, something that I have a lot of fun with, and I think that's one of the most important things uh, for any player wanting to master a deck is not getting bored with it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And how are you? If, go, let's go ahead and hop into our first match here because we got plenty of content to give you guys today. So uh, let's go. Uh, that one guy, why don't you go first? We'll do the challenge first, then we'll go to ladder. Searching. Okay, found match. and you already found the match. So why don't you start out by like, actually, first of off, while you're starting <clears throat> this match out, uh, let me ask you, uh, Ganon, what are your thoughts on Inferno Tower with Expo decks? Is that one of the, the versions that you try when you're tilting with 2.9? Or, or why do you prefer Tesla to Inferno Tower? Oh no, I do. Yeah, when I'm tilting, I do use Inferno Tower. It's mainly because, like, I probably because I play too many like tank decks, where it's like I face a lot of RNG, and mm -hmm. I think Inferno Tower, it's like, it's really good against tanks. But the only issue with Inferno Tower, in my opinion, is uh, light. And like, say you're trying to put down a Tesla, and they lightning it, you can't like exactly uh, cycle back to it, and um, mm -hmm. it because it, it just works differently. Like Inferno Tower works differently from uh, Tesla in terms of defense. Yeah, and, and that one guy, I guess, is a good transition question for you here. Nice defense, and he committed really hard with that poison there. Uh, do you feel like, are you using Inferno Tower ever, like, at the bridge or up towards the, the river like you would a Tesla, or are you mostly using it in the normal defensive position that we just saw there? Uh, I do it occasionally, but you've always got to make sure you really have their deck figured out. Uh, make sure they have usually a Bar Barrel or Snowball and not Zap. Uh, make sure they don't have E-Wiz and Cycle. Uh, that's 
like that's one thing you can really do is just always watch for their e whiz and if they don't have it in cycle you can get away with that especially against pekka and golem decks and set yourself up for a win and it's uh it's kind of really funny to actually do uh just to see a bridge inferno the way people <laughs> kind of complain about bridge teslas well here's something else yeah right yeah so, how do you feel about this match here against mr noob <laughs> Uh, so I've had a lot of success against just normal Pekka Bridge spam. <laughs> uh, I've actually had less success against the against the Zap version, so kind of happy for once to be facing Bar Barrel. Yeah, Zap really messes with Inferno Tower. Interesting. So, because I always thought that that Bar Barrel was like the Expo player's worst nightmare uh, in terms of a really strong counter card, but you guys are more concerned about Zap for the most part, or is it just because well, the Inferno Tower version? It's just for like the Inferno Tower, really. I think if I had like Tesla and they had Barbaro, I think that'd be a better. Uh, it'd be better. Okay, got you. And what do you do? You think that the Expo buff by four percent made it that much more viable in your eyes, or is it the Barbaro nerf, or is it the combination, or kind of like both of you? Feel feel free to either one of you kind of take uh, how you feel about the state of Expo after those balance changes. Well, I mean, I think their use rates are definitely. Uh, a lot higher because not only do they nerf bar barrel but they also give it an hp buff mm -hmm. and now you can't really like spell cycle expos as much and that also means that you could play um stack more defensive expos and that's yeah. like really crucial crucial for an offense yeah and a lot of my viewers might be we've talked about this in our previous uh dangana video but a lot of my viewers might be wondering about that first expo defensive placement so uh that one guy can you tell us a little bit about why you played that expo there uh the one next to the tower yeah, he had just used uh, both of his, or his E-Drag, uh, so I kind of wanted to just go for something that I think would make him maybe overcommit, which was a defensive expo. He didn't exactly uh, like hard overcommit, but you can see he did go with a Bandit, Battle Ram, other lane that both got shut down relatively easily. Now he goes for another Poison, so now I'm going to go in once again. You can see that Inferno Tower is still alive and well, and he has Poison out of hand, so I've got a really good chance to get a connection here. Yeah. What are you going to go for an ice spirit? We're what do you say? Wait yeah. until this gets into log range, log it out to kill it, get the tower lock. And uh, he does have his bar barrel down, so we're not going to get tower here, but it is going to be a lot of damage. I'm going to catch this with an ice golem, immediately go in with another expo, and uh, just see how he answers it. So he goes in with an e -whiz. The damage is going to get split because he has so much, like... Uh, or not because so much, but just yeah. because. But this might be this is gonna be this might be GG right here. Uh, we're gonna get a lot of damage. It's not gonna be quite GG yet, just because Bar Barrel is gonna catch. Mm -hmm. But uh, he is in the spell cycle range. I'm not gonna go with an expo immediately in case he prediction Inferno Dragons. Yeah, you can pretty much spell cycle though, because he doesn't have like Pekka either. It's mainly yeah, just battle. Uh, he went with the uh, prediction Inferno Dragon, which if we weren't ready for, it could have been really dangerous for us. Yeah, that was a good call. Uh, he was locks onto the guards, and this is relatively GG now because damage is going to get split. Expo locks on the tower, and well shake played. Face. <laughs> shake face, GG. Well played. What did you see there again? And uh, would you have made rel you know for the most part the same plays there? Like in in kind of look watching that one guy play, would you say that you have a similar play style? Yeah, I would have played like that, except maybe I probably would have spell cycled probably at like uh, 684. Because especially, because he didn't have like Pekka or anything, especially. I could have just like sat there and def Yeah. But I think, well, I think I think Cam made the right play though, because he had a lot of time as well and he just decided to play Expo. Yeah, can't argue with those results. All right, Ganon, you're up, man. All right, we're inside a match right now, guys. I got glitched out, so I edited there, but <laughs> here we go. What's going on? What am I missing? Okay, here we go. All right, so now we're switching to to the faster 2.9 classic. So I guess let me just start out by before we kind of get into play by play here. Uh, again, like what are your in case people missed the first vid time I had you on voice? Uh, what do you think like the biggest maybe misnomers or mistakes or misunderstandings or or misplays uh, that you see from people picking up 2.9? Uh, I'd just say playing like Expo as the first play. It's always a high risk, uh, high reward situation. Got you. And you start with yeah. a defensive Tesla, like in the middle, in the pull position there. Do you ever play a high Tesla to kind of set up for an Expo, if that makes sense? Uh, it depends on the deck, ultimately. It so is early like on, you just want to identify what deck he's playing. Right. Obviously. 
This is some weird deck. I have no idea what this is. So kind of interesting. Banded yeah. mini Pekka. Right? Because you're like, okay, you see the mini Pekka and the baby dragon, and the mega minion. You're like, okay, maybe it's lava hound. And then you see the bandit. You're like, okay, maybe it's bridge. Oh, it's that's gold. interesting. All right. Well, it's glad that we got. A, I'm glad that we got a golem match. I'm sure you're not very. <laughs> but like, do you think that golem? Uh, Either one of you, what do you think the chances of a golem deck like this, uh, chances of winning are? Uh, on an average, on for an average player, not a god like Ganon. <laughs> um, maybe like 50%, uh, okay. 60 maybe. It, I, I, honestly, I have It depends widely on the variant. Gotcha. Because uh, we still don't know what this guy's big spell is. Mm -hmm. uh, and that could really change the outcome of the matchup, so this is not so bad to face. And you get a lot because, there. Uh, yep. Yeah, whenever he needs to poison on defense, wow. uh, he really can't set sure up a goal. Too. And he zaps, so that's gonna, that tower is going to be down to about 900. Wow. Just about okay, so that went really, really well. And that would man... overestimating that expo health buff. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay, so here's our first defensive sequence. So, yeah. Nice. Oh boy. Ooh, that fireball. Yeah, I, had, I didn't really talk because I was just trying to focus. No, 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 no. I think we were all just kind of focused there. Uh, that was unbelievable. I don't know why, but like, when they Expo golem defense is beautiful. Yeah, Expo on defense, I always think as a viewer, I always think that you're going to lose every golem push. <laughs> and yeah, you'll... I know. It's like, it's really scary. <laughs> it's like, no, you can't stop a baby dragon, a mini peck, and a bandit, and a golem, but you do. And is oh, it... he just did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to let him concentrate here too. But Cam, why don't you... Is it as easy as are you always trying to fundamentally on a big push like that just pull opposite lane like you just keep stacking teslas eventually uh that's one of the big things that you uh, want to do a lot against poison uh just because uh, obviously it's not fireball when whenever they poison with your tower you can kind of just do exactly what Ganon just did there cycle back to a second tesla and keep everything kited over uh and as you can see it works really well most of the time and dude relatively easy <laughs> GG. a lot of that damage <laughs> came from the cycling I haven't played Golem in like a while, so. Well, it's kind of, you, it was kind of weird, but you made it look still relatively easy. I think the principles, whether or not you were you're happy with the gameplay, I didn't notice any mistakes really. But uh, whether or not you were happy with the gameplay, I think the principles do apply there, especially how to handle it on defense. I think everybody knows how to handle Golem on offense, right? Like you know, doing what yeah, you did there. Yeah, exactly. They uh, yeah. They just go like Golem opposite lane, or they Golem in the back, and you just go opposite lane, pretty much. That's like. That's like the main component everyone pretty much Exactly. So you're you're using it as a punish. Cam, feel free to hop into your next match too in the GC. And while we do though, again, I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on uh and you're already match. inside a match there. Yeah. So it, it kind of walk it through me the basics just to kind of reiterate. So they drop a golem in back, you drop an expo opposite lane. Now do you have to be very careful at how much you support that expo though? Because obviously they have a golem coming at you, or are you okay supporting it because you know they're gonna have to answer it? Um, it ultimately depends on the troop. If they, um, if they drop, like, Baby Dragon, I would just let it go. But if they drop, like, Mega Minion, I would, per I personally would just drop, like, Skeletons and Archers. Just use the least amount of Elixir possible to kill it. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, I don't do this often, but I, I use a Fireball on the Mega Minion, but I push it towards the, the tower so that the tower can, like... But okay. I, I normally don't do that, though. I just, I probably just use Archers and, uh, Skeletons. Okay, makes sense. So here we go against this guy BMing. So we gotta beat the dirty BM, we gotta do it. Alright, so uh, Lumberjack, Flying Machine. Good chance that it's some type of Lava Perch Spam deck. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go with Ewiz on left side. Uh, he goes for a Baby Drag, I'm actually gonna just leave that right now. It's not gonna get into Rage Range. It's uh, probably Lava yet. Hound. Yeah, it's most likely Lava Hound, but I'm just playing a little safe. Oh, oh, clone. Sure. oh, it's a clone deck, I think. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. All right, so uh, we just let that kill, and now we take this fireball and everything. Kind of a bad placement. He allowed us to clip the baby drag, which now he really has no defense. So uh, what we're going to do is just wait for the LJ to get by, then pull it back up with guards. 
And uh, even though these guards aren't going to get any additional value, we shut it down pretty easily. And uh, I'm not sure about the version with bats, uh, but I've been having pretty good success with this deck against Lava Clone. This is the first time I think I've faced the bats version, though. Yeah, very interesting. So when he drops a Lava Hound at you eventually, uh, are you going to be Inferno Tower same? Uh, we'll see in a second, I guess. <sighs> Okay. Yeah, it's it's a really gimmicky defense that a lot of people question me for, but it it works most of the time. So you might have a good laugh here too. Ah, oh, I can't wait it's to something, see. Something it's it's something unconventional. <laughs> yeah, the Inferno Tower is really useful in this matchup. I would say that's like the one thing I would make about like Inferno Tower, like one positive, especially with like everyone not using Zap and everyone's like transitioning to Snowball. It's really it's really useful. Yeah, for sure. Oh, oh. Man, you just stopped him. You didn't take any damage there. That was amazing. Oh, it's like, it's like a tiny bit. But... It looked it looked scary for a second, but yeah, and this and guy's... It's a really unconventional defense, but as you can see, uh, he has no reset. Mm -hmm. and so this is really already GG. We're going to go ahead and fireball that. Just play it safe. Yep. This guy's going to uh, be he stuck. Goes in, he goes in for the nasty clone, but he yeah. just an Ewis shuts that down. and Relatively easy, 12-0 in this GC. You can see this deck is really... <laughs> This specific meta deck, Lava Clone, is the reason I'm liking this so much, because it just has so many good answers, especially that Inferno Tower placement. Mm -hmm. It just shuts down so much, even if they clone. Even uh, though our Inferno Tower locked a bat first, we still managed to just easily lock the Hound, get a great value fireball, and shut down everything. Yeah, man, that was nasty. That guy, he's he's still picking his nose, I think, somewhere out there because uh, that was not too uh, too too good for him. But yeah, GG's. Uh, Gannon, feel free to search. And congrats on the twelve and zero. That was that was a nice clean uh, twelve and zero there. Uh, let's go ahead and do the uh, do another ladder match here, Gannon. And while you search, I'm curious how you would have handled that matchup because that deck is is kind of everywhere. I mean. I think the way Cam played it, I think it was smart. Like, he just kind of, like, got the best exchange and then played an expo. Mm -hmm. And that's pro I'd, honestly, I'd honestly do, like, the same thing. Just okay. have a play an exchange and then count. So when they dropped that Lava Hound, you would have played an expo offensively and then played a Tesla behind it and then just, you know, kept, kept cycling your defensive cards? All uh, right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, one thing people should keep in mind uh, is that Inferno Tower does have slightly more range than Tesla, so that can affect uh, the interactions uh, and just the actual placements of your buildings, so just watch out for that. Okay. Good point, good point. So here we go against uh, this guy, Lucio Kill, playing... Triple Splash so far. Yeah, who knows, I was going to say. It's kind of a weird meta. It's hard to. It looks like this is like a graveyard deck. Interesting. Uh, Tesla's gonna get great value. It's gonna pick off the minions. Tower's picking off the last minion. Wow. Fuller is gonna. Yeah, that was a really good ice going by the way. Spell. Wow. And so you can see, you can already see Ganon's built up a huge elixir lead, and he's got damage lead. Yeah. And uh, he just got great value off of that ice spirit pulling the baby dragon into the Tesla. It's something you're gonna do a lot against graveyard decks is pulling in their opposite lane troops. And uh, now they're even on Elixir, and Ganon has the supporting Tesla. And yeah, you can just you can sometimes overwhelm these decks that don't have a big tank if they even waste almost any Elixir on cards. Yeah, and this one, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm curious as to we're seeing it right now, but I'm kind of curious as to how you deal with decks that have, uh, you know, multiple cards that are kind of like pseudo e expo uh, counters. But it looks like. Is, is, does it really come down to at the end of the day, and this is maybe an oversimplification, but you just wait to either generate a positive elixir lead or just wait for them to make a mistake? I mean, I was, so he just played the Valkyrie there, and I was yeah. going to try to take advantage of that, but I don't think that was the best play, probably. Mm -hmm. well, I'm noticing the patience here on display in really all of these matches. That, like, just not overdoing it. Uh... One thing I noticed some Expo players do in 2.9 is they play their archers in the same lane. Uh, how do you feel about, is that just to bait out spells or how do you feel about that? Um, uh, it's just for better support. So yes. that's what I think anyways, because I've done that some, I've done that before. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's always going to be deck dependent, but uh, especially against decks with lightning, archers same lane can be your main defense sometimes. Uh, and they'll I got work you. out pretty well. Supporting Tesla uh, gets one hit on that Valkyrie, and it doesn't get any swing on the Expo. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. And here you can just see how clean you're able to play defense here. Like even if try, yeah. it's that was that was kind of funny. Uh, you could, as you seen if you were paying attention, uh, the bowler knocked the ice golem back and into the baby dragon's line of sight. So just All some, skill. Uh, just some yeah unintended consequences <laughs> for the opponent. Yeah. That was all pre-planned. What are you talking about? <laughs> On Ganon's oh, part. Oh, of course. Just making game. <laughs> so now we get that lock there. That was a huge lock, man. You guys make this look too easy. Now, what do you think, uh, you know, just ball total ballpark, and I know this is an impossible question because it really depends on what decks you're facing, but, you know, just total guess. How many of your matches end up in draws, would you say? Um, Not as much. Not as many, honestly. Okay. Like, it's, I relatively don't tie as much as I used to. Interesting, with, okay. With two probably because nine, of the barbell nerf, that's <laughs> probably why. With 2.9, I tie uh, relatively little, uh, especially since the very long time now added to go, three minute ladder overtime. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I'd say with this deck, I probably draw about 10% of my matches so far because uh, with Guards Inferno Tower, it's a lot more defensive. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, because it's a lot more defensive, you're giving up your out cycle potential against a lot of decks. Uh, and so I'm drawing a lot more with this than I did with 2.9 recently. Sure, makes sense. And here we go, his final uh, hoorah here with the graveyard, but you have Fireball, 2 HP. Bye-bye, Dan Gannon, another win. Well, heck, a, uh, an undefeated video here, guys. Thank you so much for coming on. A lot of people have been requesting both of you guys to get on the channel. So, so happy to have my very first ever 2 Pro Expo vid. Uh, Ganon, that one guy. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us on. Thanks for having us on, Nash. No problem. You guys want any, any shout-outs or anything like that? Any uh, complaints, any rants, anything at all you want to get off your chest before I let you go? Follow that one guy CR on Twitch. <laughs> I, I have nothing, so uh, I'm good. All right, sounds good. Well, guys, definitely check out that one guy on CR on Twitch. <laughs> wow, that was a mouthful. Check out that one guy on Twitch. I'll have the links in the show notes in the pinned comment for you guys to both of these guys, their player profiles, thanks to statsrail.com, and, of course, all their social media information. So check them out, guys. You won't regret it. Thank you so much for watching. Huge shout out to Brent Chong, my YouTube partner as well. Thanks, and as always, take care, guys.